greetings from your home front missionary. If you haven't heard already, the New York Pilgrims are going to be planting a church in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. Thank God for his providence, thank God for his leadership, and thank God for his steady hand upon us. We thank God for all that we've learned in this internship, and it has been very valuable for this next stage. Now it's time for Pilgrims to march forward. A word about our methodology and moving forward may help you to understand what exactly it is that we are doing. Our methodology is nothing new, but rather flows from the stream of our heritage. John Wesley had seen many needs and found a way to fulfill each and every one of those needs and put it into such a system where fruit was gathered and remained. That system was made up of many different groups. First, there was the class meeting. The class meeting was a small setting where people got together. They were sharing their burdens one with another. They sang songs together. They asked each other how it was with their soul. They made themselves accountable and they met weekly. We're planning to have small groups set up in Wilkesbury. We may even call them pilgrim bands where this is very much accomplished. People are much more willing to open themselves up in that kind of a setting that we can really get into their hearts and, and into their minds and trying to help them along to live this gospel. Our goal is to get three to six of these small pilgrim bands, much like the class meetings, and out of that to form a, another group, society meeting. Society meeting is very much like what you and I would understand a local church to be like. We may not call it a society meeting, but we're planning to gather together on Sunday in the morning, and it would be much like a regular service. It's going to be in our home, at least at first, where there will be preaching, praying, singing, that anointed preaching atmosphere. Then after that, we'll follow that with fellowship uh, meals together, like the apostles as they gather together daily with the, uh, talking about the apostles' doctrine and breaking of bread in that time of fellowship. We found that to be very valuable here in Rome. We did that once a month, and uh, it has been a strengthening and a help to make these people feel like they're family and they're very close-knit. After we have that meal on that Sunday, uh, we are going to then have a time of teaching in the afternoon. Uh, we're going to try and teach the children and the adults at those times. Let it be kind of open and uh, questions being asked, uh, kind of carrying them through some of these doctrines. One question you may be asking is, some of this sounds wonderful, but how does that help us get a new Pilgrim Holiness Church? Well, out of these efforts and then getting into these Sunday gatherings, we are looking to inculcate into them biblical principles of living and doctrine, obviously. And this time in the society meetings and in these small cell groups will be where preparatory membership could start. And through that, trying to lead and draw these people to see the value of joining the Pilgrim Holiness Church at large, helping them to understand that we can do far more together as an organization and as a group of people than we could do in these small little isolated groups. So we would be working with them in that regard to help them uh, into membership. We want also to help them to understand why they want to be members to the Pilgrim Holiness Church. So we need to brand these people. We need to catch a renewed vision as pilgrims so that these people will want to come in these churches. And may God help us to do that. May God give us a fire again in our breasts that people, when they look at us, say, I want to be a part of these people like they did with the Salvation Army. I want to be with the Salvation Army like they did with the Nazarenes. I want to be a Nazarene like they did with the Methodists. I want to be a Methodist. And you know, they had a pride of being a Nazarene, the pride of being the Methodist. That helped them gel together and shoulder the work and do that tremendous work that each one of these groups had done. We want to bring them in to the Pilgrim Holiness Church because the Pilgrim Holiness Church has sold themselves out to Jesus Christ and we are going to militantly go forward and we are going to take the devil's territory back for the King of Kings and for the Lord of Lords. Out of all of this, we want to be looking for people also that have leadership aptitudes. And the goal is that within the first year, 
of meeting these individuals and discerning their leadership aptitude is to then have them go at the very least through the first year's study of the Pilgrim Holiness study course. If they have a call to preach, we would like to get them through all four years of the study course. And the idea is that there will be uh, something akin to Wesley's class leaders in these small cell groups. They're going to be like under shepherds, helping these people, forming these people, loving these people, keeping close to these people. And out of this, I believe also we're going to find the next generation of our preachers. They're going to be dug out of that city. They're going to be dug out of the locations. They're going to be the anointed pastors and preachers for all the churches that get planted throughout that valley there, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, Dixon City. And that brings me to a point. You're not investing in this in a building. You're investing in people. You're investing in a family, my family. You're investing in a vision. You're investing in a future. You're investing in a movement. Because I don't believe that this venture is just going to be one little small church planted in Wilkesbury, But I believe this is going to be the beginning of churches being planted all throughout our conference. I believe that God wants more people finding the gospel. And it appears to me that if Wesley had done this and it worked so simply, why can't we do the same today? In fact, there are people that are doing this very same thing today with tremendous success. And I believe that's because it's the most forward means to get the gospel into people's hands and to gather up all the fragments that none be lost. So as you are thinking about giving for this Easter offering for church extension, I just want to ask you to pray. God blesses those that give out of a cheerful heart. You may not be able to come on the front lines and do things, but you may have the finances to help those who will sell all and go out to the front lines and do what God wants them to do in that regard. So be praying, Lord, what do you want me to give? Obviously, this work will take finances. We need uh, housing, a place to live. We need to make a living. In doing this, we can take care of our families. We're going to need tracks. We're going to need literature. We're going to need signage when we do some street meetings. Or if we get a building, we're going to want to brand this as pilgrim work. But we need your help. This church extension offering, as you know, is one of the largest uh, boons to the church extension and to its fund. We depend very heavily upon this. And incidentally, we depend very heavily on you and your generosity and your love for Jesus Christ and your love for his kingdom. And we pray that God will help you and bless you richly as you obey the Lord. Also, we need you to pray. We still need your help in prayer. We're still, there's still a little bit of time between now and between the beginning of August before we'll be moving on there in Wilkesbury, And so we need your prayers. Lord, where do you want us to be? Where do you want us to be planted? And God will help us in that. And we trust he's going to help us through your prayers. We also believe that much like our founding when the Binghamton Rescue Mission was started, as you know, it was very small and there was very few people that started there. But as they began praying, People started coming from all over the country, selling off their property, getting rid of their businesses, and answering the call to go to the Binghamton Rescue Mission. I believe that there are others that are called to go down in Wilkesbury. It's going to take more than just my family going in there because I have weaknesses where your strengths will fill up. So maybe you have a call. We need your unique abilities. We need your unique strengths. Be in contact with Brother Peabody or Brother Newman if you feel the call of God in your heart to come into Wilkes-Barre. This is going to be a joint and a team effort. This is going to be the body of Jesus Christ as lively stones built up together as a habitation of God through the Spirit where a hungry world is going to look on and see that there is a God that's after them and that loves them. So we need your help as well. As you then think about this church extension offering, just Think about the kingdom of God and its advance. And until we meet again, may the Lord bless you richly.